back up. Yep. Filter. Hello folks and welcome to another video. Today Stevie and I are heading up to do the Skur Yusakin round which has three rocky mountains and hopefully we'll get a camp up high tonight. As you can see the weather is absolutely stunning. However it is going to be a bit breezy further up so we'll hopefully get somewhere sheltered. For the eagled eyed viewer you might recognise that this forms part of the Cape Raft Trail. Okay folks, that's our one hour stint on the Cape Raft Trail over. We're going to branch off and pick up the ridge from here. This is where the fun begins. So the silhouetted peak on my left there, that's our first peak of the day, or the weekend I should say. And it looks far away but as the crow flies it's about two kilometres. Sun sets in two hours so we've got a bit more time to go to get pushing on. So let's go. Right, thankfully we skipped round this little top here, just round here and up. There's two golden eagles round about here. The camera is never going to pick them up, so you might just have to take my word for it. But yeah. Well, the scenery is absolutely stunning behind me there, but I'm really looking forward to topping out in this core bit here because I think it is going to be super boss but I'll let you be the judge later on <laughs> So that's us made the first Corbett of the weekend, Skur Kir Ahuren, I think it's pronounced. And uh, it is a fine viewpoint, I have to say. But that took us two and a half hours from car to summit, so that's good going. And uh, now we need to find somewhere to pitch. I'm just kind of looking down the ridge and hopefully we'll find somewhere just down here somewhere. Good thing is we've got just over an hour of daylight to play with. So that leaves us plenty of time to scope out this ridge and get pitched up somewhere. So just here, hopefully we'll make out that is the sky cooling. I can actually think I can recognise the Corbett that I did last spring. Garvin. I swing around here, you've got the hills in Noidart in here. And that the one there, Skurnakish. And then I think if this big one here could be Larvin. Might be wrong, but yeah, fantastic. And there's Big Stevie. Dropping off, this was interesting. The Walk Highlands route actually has you coming off the south side here. We have just found a nice little easy scramble just over to the north, but you certainly wouldn't want to come right down the front there. That would be a tricky scramble. Oh, 
So it's five to eight, the tent is finally pitched, my bed is all sorted, happy days. I'm on a bit of a slope and I realised that halfway through pitching I was trying to change it mid pitch and just sort of move it down a little bit just to get off the worst of the slope. So it's looking alright. So now it's just waiting for the sunrise, Ugh, the sun set and it's looking a bit cloudy unfortunately but it should still be good. So we should get some nice colours behind me there. Right I'm just waiting for my little stove to boil. First things first, cheeky mug shot. Second up, vegetable chipotle chilli with rice. And then a cheeky little Horlicks, they're brilliant by the way. Just send you to sleep, just last thing, just before you go to bed. Of course, I'm getting to that age, I'll need a pee about an hour later. <laughs> but aye, that's uh, food sorted. Stevie's just shown off his new tent, the MLD Geomid. And he's got himself a nice new Atom Packs as well. Lucky bugger. It's a custom one though, because you just have to be so quick if you want to buy the, the general ones. Stevie says he had it in his basket, went to pay for it in PayPal, and then before he knew it, boom, they were sold out, and he lost out. Gotta be quick! Get on the, the fibre broadband. <laughs> but yeah, it's a nice night. Sunset, not long ago. Bit cloudy, wasn't the greatest, but still nice to be out and finally get a high camp. As you know, the last two were failed, just rubbish weather, then Kev got his gear wet. So uh, yeah, third time lucky for me. And I think Kev's doing a day trip on some Munro bagging tomorrow. But aye, it's nice. Happy days. Stevie managed to leave his uh, bioethanol in his car when he met me earlier. And he didn't realise until we were pretty much in Glenfinnan. So I'm going to lend him some. I should just have enough for the two of us. Might not sort him out for breakfast, but I'll get him, I'll get him his dinner. <laughs> What's he like, eh? Much you I'll, need him? I'll get it back. Aye. <laughs> Much you need in? Yeah, just enough for the stove. 20 ml? 30? 15 ml, I think. Mil. Like Much you boiling though? Yeah, maybe 500 grams or something. 500? You may need a wee bit more, I'll give you 20. Yeah. Try that, I'll do. It's a brand new stove, that. Aye. I've got to be fucking 10 in them or something. Get every last drip in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a little. Oh, did you hear that? That's ptarmigan. Hope the mic picks that up. Yeah, anyway, so the little flex tail light, uh, this is its second brightest. And it seems to do a good job for vlogging. Hopefully you can see me, my face isn't too grainy. So I'm starting this little thing where on my YouTube community tab, I'll ask you guys some questions and then in the up and coming video, I'll then reveal the answers and then have a quick chat about it. So a few weeks ago I asked on the community page how often do you get out hiking and or camping? So I got 220 votes which is quite good and this is the results. So 9% said they're out every weekend 24% um, of you said you were out every other weekend 31% is the most popular answer and that was for once a month and then 27% being the second most popular with once every two to three months, and then 9% that other uh, please stay. So when I read the comments, a lot of people were saying that whilst they might wait a few months before they're out, it probably means that they'll take two weeks annual leave, they'll head up to Scotland, do lots of like Munro bagging, or they'll do a long distance trail. So it doesn't necessarily work out they're out once a month or whatnot. So um, let me know in the comments section how often you're out. I personally, I try to get out probably once to twice a month, maybe every other weekend. But uh, it, it's where dependent and obviously I've got the 9 to 5 job and things like that. So yeah, it just depends. But uh, yeah, do let me know in the comments section how often you like to get out. Otherwise, I'm going to go to bed and I'll catch you guys in the morning. Cheers. Good morning, campers. It's been a while since I've last said that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm up. It is quarter past six. I was a bit of a rough sleep last night. It was zero degrees for most of the night and um, this sounds stupid but I was toasty in the quilt but I kept getting just this little slight draft on my back and that kept me up. 
So I ended up having to cinch the coil up to cut out the draft and uh, after that was fine but uh, yeah anyways I've not looked outside yet but it looks as though it's going to be a nice sunrise actually um, I'll get the tent open and we'll have a look oh nice Can I have a whoop whoop? Super boss. Look at that folks, that's what you need to watch out for, that rod just popped out, I'll put that back in when I go home, but I actually lost one of these, it cost me $50 to get one posted over from uh, America. It is 8 o'clock, that's me packed up, ready to roll, Stevie's just behind me there, he's almost ready to go as well, just collapsed his tent, leave no trace on all that jazz, let's go. That wind chill is perishing. But anyways, this is our next target here. I'll just swing round the right way. Boom, this one here. It's a rocky little character, this one. And this is the highest of the range as well. It's literally took us 20 minutes to get down to the lowest point. So we're down to an altitude of 600 metres and we've got a 250 metre pull up to the summit of the next one. Alright folks, it looks like we're doing this little grassy rake up here and then when we get to about here I'm not sure what happens if it zigzags and then up to the summit we'll soon find out summit is literally just above us here but there's crags everywhere and we're just sort of weaving in and out finding a way up through the crags using little grassy rakes here and there but we're almost there no, no, another 10 minutes Alright, 1 hour and 15 minutes since breaking camp and we're on the summit of Skur Yusakan, I think is how you pronounce it but the views are tremendous, really are amazing So this loch down here is Loch Shiel Brilliant
This here is Connor Glen, which you may remember from the Cape Raft Trail video. We've took a short detour over to this minor top just to see the views and they do not disappoint. You got a grandstand view right down Loch Shiel to the Glenfinnan Viaduct. Stevie reckons that Loch Shiel is one of the longest lochs in Scotland. Well, certainly in the within the top five, maybe. I think you've got Loch Awe, which is the longest. Loch Lomans maybe second, or maybe Loch Ness actually. So this could easily be maybe fifth or sixth longest. I'll uh, research that and I'll put the stats on the screen now. <laughs> Aye, brilliant. So this here is the second Corbett we were up earlier. We just came all the way along this ridge, right along. That minor top we visited is just out of sight and then we followed these fence posts to where we are now. And at an altitude of 515 metres, we find ourselves here. <laughs> a big pull up next. Right, we've had a breather. It's 5 to 11, time to get up this Drame Tarson, I think is how you pronounce it. So Stevie's just gone ahead, let's catch up. And if I've got it then, yep, let's go. Ooh. So Drame Tarson is 770 metres high. We've just started off there at 515 metres, so what's that? Uh, my maths is terrible off the spot. Uh, what, about 255, is it? Is that right? Out of that wind, it is absolutely roasting. Roasty toasty. And then you hit the wind and you're like, oh no, get the layers on. It's nice to just look over there and see the ridge that we were on earlier on today and the corbett that we camped on. Seems like ages ago. And that in front is the summit just up there. There's Stevie boy just coming up behind me. Hey, hey, this is us folks. This is the top of Dream Tarsun at 770 metres and it is the most remote of the three peaks that we've just done this weekend. As you can see it is miles away from the road. <laughs> Oh, well, as predicted, we got up to the summit pretty much bang on 12 o'clock. We met our first two people of the day. It was Fiona Outdoors, who does a blog, and it was Robert White, who is the editor of the Scots magazine. I believe it's the oldest magazine in Britain, or Scotland at least. So yeah, it was nice chatting to them. Now we're just going to have a cheeky spot of lunch and then make our way down towards Corner Glen. That was a good wee lunch stop, Stevie. Needed that, like. Needed that. Needed that. Bit of chocolate. Let's get ourselves off here. Aye. Well, that is half past twelve. We're at the Bialak between the two tops. Now we're going to head down, which will take us into Connor Glen, and we'll meet back up with the Cape Raft Trail. So what we'll do, we'll pluck our way down here. I'll bring you back when we hit the Glen. We want to keep to the right of the gorge here and then keep heading down 
and you want to go to the right side of this plantation, pick up the stream and then back up. Righty oh folks, we have got a river crossing here. This could be troublesome in spate conditions. Thankfully today, it's nice and sunny and the river level is nice and low. So I can just tiptoe across without getting wet boots. We dip deep bit here. Whoosh. Boom, there we go. Dry feet. Well, now we've reached the valley floor. You can probably see our next route behind me there. Up to the Bialak, just in front of Stevie. And then that's where we pick up the Cape Raft Trail route again. So, uh, let's go. Ah, yes. Who remembers this gate here from the Cape Raft Trail? Oh, glad that pulls over here. Yes, back on the track. Ooh. If you've spied this little device that's been attached to my rucksack all weekend and you're wondering what it is, it's a Zolio two-way satellite communicator on the Iridium network and the company are well known in Australia and America. Now they're trying to break into the European market and challenge some of Garmin's market space for these type of devices. So I've been trying it out. At the moment, I'm pinging my partner Nicola. 10 minute messages just for a location on maps here. She can turn off notifications, but if she goes into the Zolio app, she can see my progress as I move along. 10 minutes, intervals, probably a bit too much, but I'm just testing it out at the moment. So if you'd like a more in-depth review, please let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, it's a good little device. It'll work anywhere in the world, on satellite, mobile network, or Wi-Fi. So if none are available, it'll bounce to the satellite, as long as you've got a clear view of the sky. I actually forgot how bad this path was. <laughs> I think when I was on the Cape Raft Trail, I was just had mesh trail runners and I was just barging through the bog in the water, not giving a shit. <laughs> and I had dry feet up until just back there and I just sunk into bog and it uh, just got in over the back of my heel. Great. Whew. All right, folks. This is where we left the path yesterday to start heading up the ridge. So it seems like a good point to wrap up the video. If you've watched this far, thank you very much and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers, but for now, I'm out of here.